Namaste, I'm Suzanne Martin. I'm here to talk about the difference between lower versus higher knowledge. This is a teaching that's brought to us by the sages. It's also a teaching that can be found in the great text, the Bhagavad Gita. And it's a conversation I've been having with my students lately, those that are in the program HealthWise, the Habit Evolution Program that helps you feel great in your body and great in your lives and just kind of live your best life ever. Uh, this is the kind of conversations that we have on a regular basis. So lower knowledge, um, basically what we're looking at when we think of lower knowledge is everything that we kind of learned in school, everything that we're reading in books, when we're Googling the information that we get there, when we're reading the paper, when we're looking at our phones, it's every bit of knowledge that we gain from our external reality. Higher knowledge, on the other hand, comes from a higher source, a more expanded source and that source can actually be found within you. So the key here to access that higher knowledge is to remember that you are spirit having a human experience. There's a spirit part of you that is expansive, that is all-knowing, and you can access that at any time by listening to your intuition, listening to your conscience. And so what happens when we do this? When we start to go inside for answers versus outside. And this is something that we really need in society today, right? Our culture has become overrun with information, so much so that we've lost the ability to discern for ourselves what's right. You are not a statistic, you are an individual being, you are an individual soul that needs to uh, fulfill its life and its dharma and its purpose, and it's hard to know what's right for you with all the information that's coming to you. And so the best way that you can start to discern that is by going inside and listening to your intuition, listening to your conscience. So what does that mean, listen to your intuition? So what I'm talking about is that little voice on your shoulder that tells you to go to bed when you're super tired, but then you decide to click next episode on Netflix and you stay up all night. And then the next morning you wake up and you're like, dang, I should have listened to that voice. That's the voice, right? So that voice knows what's best for you. It knows how to keep you healthy. It knows how to keep you balanced. It knows how to keep you in that place of sattva, of balance, of clarity, of ease and inner peace. And so what we're seeing through this program that is that as we shift our habits, one step at a time, and as we attune to the natural rhythms of the universe, we create a body-mind-sense complex that's absolutely clear and that can heed that inner wisdom really, really well. And so we're able to fulfill our life's purpose with more ease than we were before because our body isn't gunked up and funked up and our mind isn't all like inflamed and all of that kind of stuff. We're not puffy, we're ha not having brain fog and so forth. We're gaining a great deal of clarity as we work through various habits that support our evolution. And so what does that mean? That means that we shift from the mere self to the higher self. So the mere self is a culmination of kind of your past experiences, the culture you grew up in, the society, all of that. It's also um, kind of defined by the egoic self, right? It's this part of you that's really concerned with food, sex, sleep, and self-preservation. The higher self, kind of like higher knowledge, is the one that's attuning to spirit. It's attuning to the spirit of life at large, actually. And you can start to tap into that by listening to your intuition, your conscience. So what does this mean when you shift from the mere self to the higher self? Well, it means that you get to live your best life ever. We all have deep dreams within us. We all have things that we want to fulfill in this lifetime. And maybe we've forgotten what they were. And through this program, what we do is we start to uncover that. We start to remember who we truly are and what our purpose is in this life. We start to understand how to make decisions that are right by us. We start to understand how to love ourselves. And in loving ourselves, we see ourselves as divine. And this means that we can be divine, compassionate beings out there in the world with the people that we care about and love. And so shifting from the mere self to the higher self, what does that mean practically? Well, what we're seeing is confidence levels rise and skyrocket. 
we're seeing people heal things, ba hormones balancing, health issues shifting, and so forth. We're starting to see sleep issues go away, digestive issues go away, because guess what? The self knows how to heal the self. We don't need more people validating their experience with books and science and facts right now. Because in this, and it has its value, don't get me wrong, it has its value, and it's wonderful in many different ways. But at the same time, it doesn't need to override your intuitive faculty, your faculty of discernment. It doesn't need to override that little voice in you or that knot in your stomach that you feel when you go against yourself. And so what we're doing is we're learning how to train, we're training ourselves really to live in alignment with spirit, with every thought, every word, and every deed. And in that, we access what yogis refer to as Sat Chit Ananda, wisdom, consciousness, and bliss. It's fun. We're getting happy. <laughs> we're having a good time. And it's a beautiful, beautiful transformation. And I am grateful to all of my students and to you for listening and sharing. I hope you engage in this conversation with us in the future. You can find me at suzannemartinyoga.com slash programs. Namaste.